She wants me to reconcile with my ex-wife. Hello, it's me. I'm Tiffany. Well, 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 if it isn't, isn't Sister Winpeg. <laughs> well, Pastor McKnight, we think you kind of need to put yourself out there again. A peach cobbler that will make you scream with delight. An elder outranks the head deacon. Gotta go. What? I'm getting married and we want you to do the honors. Honey, it's what I don't see that's bothering me. Bother me a lot. Don't tell me you've already messed things up before they even got started. I knew we should have fired you the minute you walked through the door. Well, Pastor, we were pretty tough on you yesterday. That's how you and I dance. I hope that your will is up to date. So why don't you just let us know what's got you all glistened up? They're saying if we don't pay up by day after tomorrow, they're going to put a lien on the property. Thank you. Mm hmm Bye. <sighs> I don't know. Messing with him getting to be as good as old Deke. Mm. All right, little letter. I'm gonna do with you what I do with all my problems. I'm gonna stick you in the Word of God. Cause in there, I know you've lost the battle. But where? Ah. John 14. Here we go. 12. Truly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father, and whatever you ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Father, we have asked in Jesus' name, and we ask that you glorify yourself in the Son. Amen. It's done. Pastor Williams, welcome. Please have a seat. Can I get you anything? No, thank you. I just had lunch, and please call me Jed. Thank you for that. And I'm Lynn. Hey, now we're friends. I understand from your phone call that maybe there's a situation that could be touchy we need to discuss. Mm, I hope it's not, but let me tell you what I know and then offer a humble suggestion if you'll allow me. That's reasonable. First, though, I want to explain exactly why I called you. It's my belief that it's so important that ministers work with each other and not against each other, and at the very least, extend common courtesy to one another. That's true. It's a courtesy that's seldom practiced. It isn't, but you know what? It's going to be practiced here today with you and me. So let me just bring you up to date and see if we can't solve this thing. Sounds good. Now, a few days ago, my deacons came to me and told me that one of your elders, Pete Lands, came by for a visit. Oh, really? Why? All right. I'm assuming that as his pastor, you know that he has a granddaughter with whom he has a very, very close relationship. 
and apparently she loves making videos. So when he found out that we're developing a media program for youth, he came by and, well, he asked if she could join us. He's never discussed this with me. And I'm so sorry for that. You know, I suppose he had his reasons, one or another, but I just want you to know for my part, I don't go around stealing other shepherd's sheep, and I certainly don't go behind their backs. I appreciate that. I really do. But I still need to process this sense of a betrayal. And I can understand that. But maybe it'll make you feel better to know that I did have an opportunity to talk to him a little bit. And he spoke very, very highly of you. And at the end of the conversation, I was absolutely convinced that the thought of leaving your side would never enter his mind, except for the love of that granddaughter. He's very proud of her. He really is. And he's more of a father to her than a grandfather because her father is seldom around. Well, there you go. So it ought to be pretty easy for us to forgive him if he didn't exactly handle it the way he should have. Still, he could have discussed this with me. I know it, but let's face it. It is what it is. So you and I just need to move on down the road and come up with a solution for this thing. Do you have something in mind? Well, now that you mention it, I'm assuming you're interested in expanding your youth program. Any pastor should be. No youth, no future church. That's my thinking, and that's exactly why we're working on developing this program. You know, youth today, everything is media, especially video. That is a fact. It is. So I think we got a couple possible solutions. One, you and I can join hands, and together we can develop this program. Or, if you'd prefer... And if you permit, we can train your elder and his granddaughter and then send them back to you and you can develop whatever program you think works for your church. I don't know. I'd have to think about that and certainly discuss it with my leaders. I understand that fully. And Jed, I just want you to know that all in the world I want is to do what's right in the eyes of the Lord. So whatever you decide, you'll have my full support. I appreciate that. And above all, please, please, regardless of whether he did this thing right or not, Pete thinks the world of you, the world of you. It's just that, grandbaby. I know that he does. I'll be in touch. And thanks for coming by. We getting mighty comfy, aren't we? Mm-hmm. I'm so glad you have these cushion chairs. Perhaps a pillow would make you more comfortable. Oh, no thanks. I'm fine. Let me come at this thing from a different direction. Why are you camped out in front of my desk? <sighs> okay. Simple. The Pillsbury Doughboy is after me. Dough? The guy who sits at the front of the church with the Hawaiian shirt on. First of all, what's this place becoming? The Love Boat? McKnight? Now you? Second? I don't know. You know Mr. Doughboy doesn't look that porky to me. He will be if he keeps stuffing his face at the snack table in the fellowship hall. Have you seen him at the snack table? Yeah. You know why you seen him at the snack table in the fellowship hall? I'll bite. Why? Because he's always at the snack table in the fellowship hall. Still, he does a mighty fine Pentecostal two-step during praise and worship service. I don't see the problem. But what I would like to know is why is he after you? Well, evidently, Pastor McKnight told him that I was single and that I was desperate for a man. <laughs> now, come on. Come on now. You had to have done something particularly despicable for him to go into that kind of revenge mode. Well, I mean, I just told him that if he keeps stealing my sandwiches out of the refrigerator, I'm going to tell his ex-wife that he won the lottery and he wants to share. 
<laughs> oh, dear. So what you did is fire the first shot over the bow and declare war. Do you know why I have these cookies? Maybe because you'd rather date the cookie monster than the Pillsbury Doughboy? Cute. He's eating my sandwiches again. You mean today? Yeah. Uh-huh. Wait. So you the one been eating my sandwiches? My name was on it. Now, wait a minute. In fairness, there was a spot on the top of it. And I thought it was only good manners to take a wet sponge and get that sucker off of there. And after I did, I got looking at that thing. I don't know, the name was real hazy. Hey, 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 I need to talk to... Oh, oh, oh. Mmm, uh, I know that look. She's up to no good, isn't she? You can say that. <laughs> She's the one who's been eating my sandwiches. Oh, really? And you blamed me? I hope you didn't call my ex-wife. I didn't, but I will if you don't call off that Pillsbury Doughboy. Excuse me, excuse me, but did you actually want something? I actually did. Listen, I just picked this up from the post office. Those contractors, they want their money and they want it now. And they said if they don't get paid, the inspectors are not coming. Well, well how much is it? $30,000. And not only that, Deacon Hall is running around here talking about he's about to put his foot down and he's going to sell if we don't come up with the rest of that money A-S-A-P. Well, what are you going to do? I want to know, too, because Deacon Hall is coming by here this afternoon. And I got to show him this. Can I look at it? Mm -hmm. $30,000. Okay. Don't have it? Can't show it to him. You about to start some trouble. Big trouble. Possibly. But what I do know I'm going to get is some extra time to let the Lord do what he do. Look, two things I know. One, Abba wants us to have that building. And two, sorry folks, but the Lord's favorite time is 1159 when the sweat is coming down the side of your face, when all hope is lost, that's when he comes riding in on his white horse, very last minute. <laughs> Promise you. Well, when Deacon Hall finds out that you're hiding that from him, the only white horse you're gonna see is the one pulling a hearse. Mm-hmm, and you laying flat in the back of it. Mm. Oh, ye of little faith. <laughs> Stand back and behold the wonder of Almighty God. I don't know. Hello? Wait, calm down. Calm down, Tia. Just tell me. What? What happened? Uh, okay, I'll get a flight out later this evening, and I'll, I'll call you when I do, okay? Thank you. Bye. Oh, honey, what's happened? What's going on? My mom. My mom had a stroke. Oh. You, you think you're ready for these kinds of things, but, but you aren't. Mm -hmm. I gotta go. I'm gonna go help you pack. My mom hey, I'll stroke. take you to the airport, okay? Thank you. I'm on sweet time. God, our Father, we thank you for hearing us. We thank you for your word and the truth of your word. 
Lord, we need a miracle. You said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. We're asking in your name, Jesus, because you know Deacon Hall desperately wants to sell this building. But Lord, you're not done with this building nor this location. So we're asking, Lord, for the open door. We're asking for the answer. We're seeking you. Lord, we're waiting for your answer by your spirit. We thank you for the miracle, and we trust and believe you by faith in Jesus' name. Lord, in your name we pray. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Um, excuse me? Hmm. How may I help you? Uh, is the pastor around? Not at the moment, but is there something that I can help you with? Well, Wait a minute. You're, you're, you're one of the young ladies that's part of our new media ministry, right? Yes, sir. I joined about a month ago. And how are you enjoying it? Um, it's really cool. I thought we'd just be doing cameras and lighting, but Pastor Lynn wants us to write, produce, direct, act, and create the whole thing beginning to end. It's a really cool project. Oh, that sounds like that's going to be great. Because you know she sees the potential and the Spirit of God in you. And by the time that you're done, that there are going to be souls that are going to be saved, people are going to be delivered. Everything's going to be done through you in this new me media ministry. Uh, that's funny. That's pretty much exactly what Pastor Lynn said. Oh, really? Oh. Anyway, how can I help you? Our class project for history this year is to research some of the historical buildings in the area. And this church happens to be one of them. Uh, could I possibly ask you some questions? Sure, sure. I've been here for quite a few years, 40 plus years, and I think I can answer some of the questions because I've seen a few things here and there. Awesome. Good morning. Am I interrupting? Uh, that's okay. This is uh, one of the young ladies from my new media ministry. I forgot your name. I'm Jennifer Siddle. Hey, Jennifer. Uh, my granddaughter is in the program too. Becky Lands, do you know her? Um, yes, I do. Becky is really funny, and she writes some pretty cool stuff. That's my girl. Deacon Raglan, was it? Yes. I went by the church to see the pastor, but her assistant said she's over here. Well, she was, but she had to rush off to the hospital because one of the church members is sick, and she had to go see about them. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear about that. Well, have you got a few minutes I could talk to you? Well, it would have to wait until I finish with Jennifer. I'm sorry, I uh, lost track of time and I have to go to choir practice, but I can be back tomorrow, say 3.30? That'll be good. Thank you. Oh, it's nice to meet you, Jennifer. Well, she sure sounds like a nice young lady. She sure is. Her school sent her by because they're doing research on local historical buildings in the area. Is this a designated site? It sure is. Uh, quite a few years ago, we finished all the paperwork on that. Wow, that's interesting. Well, I've heard you're having some trouble paying that final repair bill. Sure we have. And that's why I've been in, in intense prayer about it. Because we've had a few hurdles, and if we don't raise the rest of the money, Deacon Hall, he is planning on selling the building. Well, if you've been in prayer about it, I think the Lord just may have heard your prayers. Oh, why do you say that? Because... I have a friend that sits on a board of a nonprofit, and it just so happens they offer grants to historic buildings. Mm. How much do you still owe? Oh, about $30,000. Uh, but it's been quite a journey. It started off at one hundred and seventy-five, and now we're down to 30000 But we've had a few hiccups in raising the last part of the money. So you just need to get the rest of that bill paid. Well, you know... My little granddaughter loves being part of the program here. Mm -hmm. She really does. She talks about it all the time. Why don't I call my friend and see what he can do about it? That would be a great blessing. And I can't wait to tell Pastor Lynn about it. Don't do that yet, because if nothing comes of it, I sure don't want her to be disappointed. Mm -hmm. That sounds fair. Well, why don't I get back to you right after uh, he lets me know if there's something they can do. Okay. All right, great. Have Thanks a great for all day. your help. You too. God bless you. Gina, sweetie, how are you? How's your mama? Well, she's alive, but it doesn't look so good. You know, I was wondering earlier, though, 
there's some kind of shot they can give stroke victims where if it's administered, I think it's within a three-hour period, they've seen amazing results with it. I mean, it's really lessened the symptoms. And for some folks, I mean, they've just popped right out of it. Any chance they gave it to your mom? Well, you know what? I wish they had have given it to her, but she was home alone. And my sister doesn't know how long she was laying on that kitchen floor. Oh, honey, you don't know how sorry I am. But listen, God's still a healer. And if Jesus raised folk from the dead, he's more than able to raise your mama. I know. But the problem is, I think Jesus probably raised those who wanted to be raised. My mom wants to go home. She's been saying that for a long time now. Well, then I guess what you and I better do is just leave it between her and her Lord. Yeah, that's what we decided to do. But listen, the reason I called was my sister is the executor of my mom's will. And she had requested that $50,000 be given to a ministry. So, and she agreed that $30,000 could be given to the old church for the repairs. Oh, blessed be his holy name. And thank your sister for me. But really, right now, let's just focus on your mama. She's way, way more important than money. Truth of the matter is, we don't even know if the Lord's ready to take her home. Well, still, I thought you'd be excited. At least I know Deacon Hall will. Well, let's, let's not tell Deacon Hall right now. Let's, let's just wait and see what the Lord wants. Well, I guess that makes sense. Although I did want to get him off your back for a little while. <laughs> you let me worry about that. Besides, you know better than anybody else that wrestling with old Deacon Hall is just pure sport for me. <laughs> <laughs> and you're so good at it. And so I am. <laughs> well, anyway, let me get back to my mom. I love you, girl. And know that you are in my deepest prayers. Thank you. I love you too. And I'll keep you updated. Bye. Bye. There you are. Warning. All night at the hospital, and I have not yet had my second shot of caffeine. Well, that's too bad. Funny thing is, I just saw the contractor at the hardware store. Well, that's wonderful. Um, perchance, did he say how his family's doing? Actually, he did. He said he's just about to have a new grandbaby. Ooh. No, no, no. You're not going to do this to me. He said he sent you a certified letter. Certified, certified. What's that mean? That means that someone signed for it. No, no, don't, don't believe I signed for anything. Well, someone did because he got a return receipt. Now, nah, you know that I'm not the only one that works here at this church. And besides, the post office is more than capable of making a mistake or two. You know, actually, I saw... Pastor McKnight leaving the building when I came in like a scared rabbit. I bet he signed for it. There you go. But if he would have signed for it, the first thing he would have done is take it to you. Where's the letter? Now, I tell you, I didn't sign anything. As far as what Pastor McKnight did, I have no idea. Come on. The letter. Huh? Give me the letter now. What letter? Pastor, all kidding aside, can I have the letter? Thank you. I knew it. I knew it. Now we can put this thing on the market and just think of the things we can do with the money. Oh, uh, excuse me. May I come in, or is this a bad time? Well, it's not a good time. Yes, it is. It's a perfect time. Come on in. And I, I don't believe we've been uh, formally introduced. Pete Lance. Hi, Pete. Good to meet you. Elder Lance, he says. But let's get one thing straight right now. My granddaddy built and found the Lamar. Why can't you just say, hi, I'm Lamar Hall. I believe we spoke the other day. He thinks he outranks me. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. 
but I might have some good news that you'd both be interested in. We could use some good news around here. Hmm. One of your other deacons told me that this was a designated historical site. Yes, my granddaddy was the founder <laughs> of... Oh, Lamar! He also told me that you're desperate to pay off a repair bill. So I called one of my friends. His organization actually donates to the preservation of historical sites. And guess what? They've agreed to pay $15,000 if you'll match it. Oh, praise God. That's awesome. What's so awesome about it? Do you have $15,000? Why can't you just praise God for what he does? I do, but I'm the only one that thinks reasonably around here. I'm the only one that thinks with common sense. Is there any possibility at any time in your lifetime that you could think with some God sense, you know, like faith? I do think with faith. Have Wait a faith. minute. You know what? I think the Lord wants me to pay the 15000 What do you think of that? Uh, oh, okay. What's the catch? Well, with me, there's no catch, but I think the Lord might have something in mind. <clears throat> Deacon Hall, per perchance could I see that letter one more time? Just just a little peek at it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That. Oh yeah, this 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 is it. And finally, the clock can strike midnight. Because blessed be the name of the Most High God. One more time, he has shown up just in the nick of time, just before the stroke of midnight. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know, I'm happy that my grandfather and my father's legacy have been preserved. But does this mean more kids? Lots of them. Oh, no. Lots and lots and lots of. Oh.